This is Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL, WPRS, HD2, and worldwide on WOLDCNews.com. Montgomery Mosaic features topics of interest to Montgomery County residents, businesses, and visitors. Here now is your host, Deborah Milo. Good morning. And uh, hello, my name is Brian Roberts. I'm in for Deb Milo this morning. I hope you're having a wonderful, warm day today. We're going to talk about a part of the county government, Montgomery County government, that you may not know um, so much about, but they do a lot and you need to know about them. And they're there to help. We're talking about the regional services centers, which are re regional offices for the county, representing the county executive and all of county government. Uh, to uh, with us today is uh, Catherine Matthews, the director of the Regional Service Center in Up County in Germantown, and Rianberto Rodriguez, the director of the Regional Service Center here in Silver Spring. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you both. And um, let's start, uh, Catherine. Tell us about the history of the Regional Services Centers. How'd they get started? What problem were they created to solve? Sure. Um, good morning, Brian, again, and thanks for having us this morning. Um, the regional offices, or back then it was the regional services centers, were basically formed to um, do exactly what our motto is today, and that is to bring the county closer to people, bring the county closer to you. Uh, back in the early 70s, the population in the county started to grow tremendously, and our demographics changed. And with that, you can imagine a lot of questions and issues and needs for service came about. And uh, the government, the county executive's office at that time, thought it might be a good thing to decentralize the county government, basically. So that's how we got our motto, bringing the county closer to you. So the very first regional office was um, in Silver Spring. The second, okay. second one was in Wheaton then Bethesda, uh, and then the Up County, which covers the area north of Shady Grove, yep. up to the Frederick County line, and the last one was in East County. Okay, fantastic. So you, you touched on a little bit, to, to, uh, what is now the mission, um, now that things have evolved over uh, the time since uh, the 70s until now? Um, uh, I think the mission today is, is pretty uh, straightforward. The the regional area uh, directors are the eyes and ears of county government to the community, and the community's eyes and ears to county government. That is, we we try to stay uh, um, very close to what's going on in the particular specific uh, regional area, and and be um, a, a inform, facilitate. Um, uh, and, and enthuse the community to engage in, in, the, in the civic spaces. It's, it's, if I could add, it's also very important, although Montgomery County has a history and a tradition of looking for community input on a lot of decisions that are going to be made, we try to bring to those policy discuss discussions and those decision-making periods of, um, we try to bring the perspective in a in a larger context, I guess you could say, okay. from our part of the county. So when you say um, engage and facilitate, um, can you give uh, uh, an example or two? How, how do you do that? I, um, sure. You don't have the largest staffs oh. in the county. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, so, so this takes some uh, ingenuity, some innovation, some creativity. T t talk to us about that. And, and it's, it's really a matter of uh, being involved. In, uh, I like to say in Silver Spring, we're involved in everything from potholes to policy and now with uh, two marijuana dispensaries to pot. So it's, it's everything across the spectrum and what, how we handle the... Uh, the the task is to uh, ourselves staying connected. We do have a series of uh, a, a advisory groups that we work with that provide um, that that added link to the community, and we we stay in touch, of course, with our chamber of commerces and our nonprofit um, uh, networks in a way that that we we can best bring. 
uh, uh, bring to the discussion, to the policy discussions, the the different perspectives. Okay. And mm -hmm. I, I could just add that I think all five of us really take a lot of time um, in uh, developing relationships with uh, various HOA leaders, um, civic groups, um, the school principals in our areas. Um, just to make sure that if we have a particular question or need to share some information, we know who the go-to person is. You mentioned uh, nonprofits and uh, HOAs, schools, um, uh, different advisory groups. Uh, how about the faith community? Are, are well, you involved? That, there that as is well? that is always a, um, a, indeed probably an example would work best. Uh, in a faith works uh, and the, uh, and and what they do uh, with um, progress place and our homeless community and the faith and the faith community being very active there and we work with them or or also with the broader faith community and the work they're doing with the immigration issues and trying to connect and and be efficient in how the resources are applied. Okay. And in the northern part of the county, the faith community is very important uh, because they, they're basically a safety net to our health and human services, okay. uh, helping to complement or supplement what the county government can do, whether it's somebody needing a little extra help uh, getting a ride to the doctors or, uh, or whatever it might be. And uh, so our faith community um, steps in. And our county, as you know, really uh, values our faith community here mm -hmm. um, in the sense that uh, an actual liaison was appointed, a person basically, right. to work specifically with that community. Yeah, Casey Caseman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so rather than running operations, you are uh, facilitating, and you've talked a, a, about a number of the different communities that you uh, serve. Um, can you give um, an example of how you've maybe linked up um, a particular community with a particular agency within the uh, county government? Well, if, if I may use the example of our amazingly wonderful uh, senior village um, here in zip code 20910, okay. when years ago some seniors wanted to explore the possibility of creating a village uh, and, and we would uh, sit with the uh, uh, leadership of the group, literally in people's uh, um, <laughs> kitchens and living rooms, and and were there supporting this um, civic entrepreneurship, if you will, okay. that has through the years now morphed into a very active uh, village for zip code 20910, where we connect uh, the county resources uh, to the to the senior community in a focused, targeted way. Okay, fantastic. And how uh, about an example from Up County? Um, one good example, a recent one, I guess, would be a neighborhood that we've worked with. Um, there, there were some electrical safety issues identified um, that we found out about. And in order to get them resolved, we had to bring in PEPCO. We had to bring in uh, our permitting services department, our housing and community affairs department, um, to basically coordinate how, with the owner, with the property owner, how to, um, uh, how to attack this problem. And this was a, a multi-dwelling uh, property. Okay. So, um, so we did that. It took us uh, a while to get that done, to get the coordination done, and, and then immediately um, get everything repaired. But then after that, uh, there were other issues or other needs that the, the residents had identified. So I convened a group of nonprofits um, who could probably deliver services a little better okay. than we could at that time. Um, and uh, so they basically came in and they're now providing health screenings and uh, they're, they're working with the youth uh, in their school, school work with tutoring and mentoring. So that was a great example, I think, of pulling together a number of organizations. I think there was a total of maybe 13 different wow. uh, agencies and nonprofits that actually yeah. came together. Now, some of that sounds um, 
uh, a little like what an elected official uh, <laughs> would do. Don't do and, that to us. And, and, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So, so what it, it touches on though is is um, perhaps uh, uh, the difference between the roles. Can maybe you can describe how you divide uh, that up? It, it's, it's it's actually pretty clear, uh, and we and we work hand in glove with our elected officials and and um, for each of our areas, uh, respective council members, and and their 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 staff. Uh, we 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 frankly affirm in some ways affirm each other's efforts, and 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 it is there is no single unique path to any one solution. So, so we really bring to the table, um, because these issues, yes, are complicated. Um, um, a great example is, as, 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 we, as we're speaking right now, uh, the, the next door, uh, Council Member Hucker is meeting with the Bonifant um, merchants that, we've, that, that I've been working with and he's been working with. So we, we work together for, f uh, in, in this case, to, to ensure that uh, when the Purple Line is built, th these small businesses um, do have a fighting chance to, for business continuity and, 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 and to, to be there when, when the line is built. So, so we uh, complement each other's work. Okay. Very good. So now, um, each of the five centers, um, you know, does have a physical location. I understand the the original model of service center meant that there were services delivered in um, in each location. That's evolved a little bit. So can you uh, talk about those those changes and and the differences now in in the distinct areas? Sure. The, I would say that the Up County Regional Office or Regional Services Center. It's still the original model, where okay. we have a number of services under one roof. Uh, and it, it's wonderful in the sense that uh, they feed off of each other, getting ideas. They coordinate services better. It's wonderful for the resident who comes in, who uh, very rarely ha comes in with one issue. Right. There are usually related issues. So they get to see um, two or three different offices in one visit without having to admit, uh, ride the, uh, the bus back and forth several times, you know, bringing the children, possibly losing important documents on each yep. trip. So that's a wonderful model. But as our regions um, change in terms of development or needs, um, We've evolved to other models, like Roberto's. Uh, and, and, and in Silver Spring, uh, most people are familiar with the uh, Silver Spring Civic Building and Veterans Plaza. That is the uh, the uh, the community's patio and living room, and we've used this means of engaging community to 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 build community. And in in essence, this this has meant we have some very aggressive uh, service centers in the area, including on Georgia Avenue, the regional test center in Long Branch, and and the community uh, centers in in, in Lytonsville uh, and and other areas. So the the Civic Building and Veterans Plaza has grown to be the place where people uh, meet by choice and by chance. And from that interaction and those relationships that Kathy mentioned earlier, we build community that way. So it's sort of like if you can think of a community uh, happens where that culture and commerce intersect. And so it's the, the model in Silver Spring has evolved more to, to this um, enthusing and, and, and connecting uh, model. Okay. That, that's fantastic. You know, when you, you, you mention, um, you know, the test center and uh, these, these other groups, how, how are you also, uh, yeah, I guess just uh, how are you communic uh, you know, coordinating with them? Well, well, oh, well, it sounds, like we're, <laughs> it sounds like we're already out of time for this segment. We'll be right back with Roberto Rodriguez and Catherine Matthews talking about uh, the regional offices of Montgomery County. All right, welcome back. Um, we are here. It's uh, Montgomery Mosaic, and uh, we're here talking about the regional offices of Montgomery County government with Catherine Matthews, the director uh, for Up County in Germantown, and Humberto Rodriguez, the director of the Silver Spring office. 
And uh, welcome back, guys. Let's um, let's talk some more about um, uh, all the great work you're doing. We touched on reaching out to the community uh, via Citizens Advisory Board uh, earlier. Can you talk about um, what they are, how they're set up, um, and what they do? Well, it's a group of residents who live in our region or work in our region. It could be either. Um, they are appointed by the county executive and, af- and confirmed by the county council. Um, and by the way, each of us, I think there's a, probably a different number of members on each of our boards. Um, but their, their role is basically to advise the county executive, council, and the regional director on various issues affecting our region. And they also weigh in on countywide initiatives or, or challenges. Um, and uh, we get some real good discussions. Uh, our job is to make sure they get good information, so we try to help them identify uh, guests who can come in and present information uh, about the issues to them. And then many times they may take a position, not a position necessarily, but they may choose to um, send comments to the executive or to the council uh, on a particular issue. They will provide these uh, letter of advice, particularly mm-hmm. during the budget process, that are very helpful to our elected officials. And 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 furthermore, it's it's been our task to to uh, make sure that our citizens advisory board look like the re- the regional areas. And and in Silver Spring, we've been very intentional in trying to to grow um, uh, the diversity, when I say diversity, is across the board, uh, young people, seniors, uh, people, uh, renters, uh, as well as homeowners, um, as well as, of course, our ethnic uh, communities, the Ethiopian community, the Latino community, and and to have a very uh, uh, intentionally diverse board so that advice can, can come from throughout the region, not one particular segment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do want people to know that their meetings are public meetings. And we encourage yep. um, the public to come and listen. There may be times to uh, for them to um, comment as well. Um, the boards meet monthly. The full board meets monthly. And I believe we all have subcommittees um, to those boards. And uh, yearly, uh, we announce vacancies because there's like a rotating yep. group off and on. So... And a lot of opportunities there. You mentioned uh, subcommittees. So what uh, currently are folks working on? Well, the Up County Board is uh, has two subcommittees. Um, one focuses on the quality of life types of uh, okay. things going on, and the other focuses on um, land use. Huh? So the land use committee reviews master plans. They might uh, look at how development is occurring in Gaithersburg, versus Germantown, they'll look at transportation, um, the need for facilities, whether it's a library or a recreation center, okay. et cetera. And quality of life, that committee looks at uh, more services and programs, uh, and they're focusing right now on education. Um, our, our traditional uh, educational s- system, um, the number of youth who go on to higher, um, uh, higher education, institutions, um, but those students who don't want to do that uh, or may not have the means to do so, what do we provide for them in terms of vocational um, yeah, training? Very important. And in, in, in Silver Spring, I guess, there's three committees, um, the, the, the Transportation and Environment Committee, uh, everywhere in Silver Spring, um, south of the Beltway and Four Corners, the whole issue of walkability and bikes is a is a big deal, and and so they focus on on that. Uh, then we have a commercial economic development committee that deals with the business aspects of our community, particularly the, the small commercial hubs that we have, be it Montgomery Hills, Tacoma Langley, um, and, and then the Neighborhoods Committee that uh, recently brought together all the, which was a fascinating meeting, a brought together principals from the middle and the elementary schools 
to a uh, conversation and dialogue with a broader community as to how um, uh, folks that live in the community that may not necessarily have uh, kids in the school, how they can uh, connect and be part of that school community. And and so these are the type of things that our Citizens Advisory Board wow. uh, groups do. And you, remember to raise the, an important point for the Up County Board, two things. One is transportation. Um, we don't have the same level of transit services that we have here in Silver Spring, for instance. So that's, and as more communities are being built out, that's become very important because the communities need to connect. People need to be able to travel from one to the other as easily as possible. Yep. And as new communities are being uh, built, um, walkability is, has come to the top of the list as well. All right. And um, that's, the uh, the walkability um, is a big issue for a number of the companies that have uh, relocated uh, to the area, saying that um, a lot of their uh, younger workers are basically requiring it. It's one of the reasons Marriott moved out of the office park and into downtown Bethesda. So that leads me into uh, economic development and. What's the role? Uh, tell us about the role that uh, regional offices play in economic development. In 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 the economic uh, economic development sphere, uh, we we connect with everything from uh, I mentioned earlier uh, the the purple line. Uh, impact on small commercial hubs. Um, uh, tonight, for example, a meeting at uh, uh, Brookville with the uh, Brookville merchants uh, uh, regarding this. The um, the Littonsville Purple Line Station at the other end of the of the line in in the regional area at Tacoma Langley, where the where during construction, how will folks navigate that difficult intersection of University Avenue and New, uh, and New Hampshire? So so we we economic development uh, is driven in a big way f from transportation, and of course you can't talk about economic development in Silver Spring without mentioning the uh, the the repurposing and transition of the Discovery Building, uh, where um, we hope to get back in that building the full complement of employees, 2,200 employees yeah. uh, in, in that facility as, as it transitions uh, ownership. And in the Up County area, um, it can be anything from helping small businesses um, address a problem, whether it's the, you know, there maybe they're reeling under the impact of nearby construction <laughs> or a street that's being uh, run, of, uh, uh, what is, what's the word I want there, a street that's being improved uh, or, or repaired, and um, maybe there's a cutoff to their front door. We, we work with them on small issues like that, but we also work with the community leaders and trying to figure out how the Germantown Town Center needs to um, evolve. What kinds of retail or, or commercial activity do they really want? Um, and then what employment should be close by? Again, to add to that walkability and uh, to shore up those, those uh, retail establishments. So we do work closely with the chambers I believe um, all of us have a Chamber of Commerce that we're yeah. working with. Yeah, in, indeed. The Chamber of Commerce, uh, we, we have uh, not only the Citizens Advisory Board, but for downtown area, an urban district advisory committee that's composed of the uh, major um, uh, 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 developments as well as uh, a certain number of residents and three chamber members. And so we, we work very closely with the Greater Silver Spring Chamber of Commerce and 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 when oftentimes our agendas truly truly al align for f for the type of work that needs to, for the type of commercial activity that needs to happen in Silver Spring. And sometimes in, as a part of their market research a new business that's looking at an area may contact us to get some idea of what we know about the community. They'll they'll okay. get all the they'll get all the stats and all the data from their market research. Right. But they may want some other um, sense of community that they're walking into. We were able to help bring a movie theater, let's say, to downtown Germantown, uh, uh, simply because our office ex gave them a lot more information than they would normally get. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, so, what's um, what's next? The um, the county is going to have um, 
a change in leadership for the first time in 12 years with the uh, end of the year. Uh, is there, does, does that, uh, do you anticipate any changes uh, uh, based on that, or uh, are there any new things that uh, you're, you're working on, or there are things you'd be working on anyway? I think we, we, we keep on keeping on. Uh, the, the, in Silver Spring, we are faced with, basically, we are under, living under construction, given, the, again, the yeah. purple line, the uh, upcoming bus rapid transit, the work of PEPCO on some of the major thoroughfares. So, so, uh, so, so we will continue connecting the community to county government and, and vice versa. Okay. And we hope to help with the transition as we have in the past and by clarifying issues um, that are, you know, that we're currently dealing with and anticipating some potential ones that might uh, come up in the next few years and then making sure that uh, our contacts list is up to date. So if we need to reach out to somebody, we know who we're going to. All right. Well, this has been fantastic. Um, believe it or not, we are just about out of time. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Catherine. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. And um, please uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, oh, join us again next month for another uh, installment of Mosaic Montgomery Mosaic Radio. And uh, watch us on uh, TV on County Cable Montgomery as well. You've been listening to News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. You've been listening to Montgomery Mosaic, featuring topics of interest to Montgomery County residents, businesses, and visitors. For more information or a copy of the show, email public information at montgomerymd.gov or call 240-777-6507. Be sure to tune in at this time on the second Wednesday every month for Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL, WPRS, HD2, and worldwide on WOLDCnews.com.